Um, yeah, movies theaters been going through a lot of devastation lately. Yeah. Speaking of devastation. Yes. Godzilla yes. minus one. Yes. So this is sort of a re-review because I saw this in theaters last fall, actually mm -hmm. last winter. Uh, Daniel, I don't believe you had seen it yet. Or... No, uh, I it was my first viewing of it. Um, yeah, I, I watched it on Netflix. Um, I actually I watched it twice. Uh, I watched it first time. I watched it in the English dub, and then I watched it again with the Japanese uh, subtitles. Um, and I will, I will say, I think the subtitled version is better. Um, for for some reason, I had an easier time following it when it was subtitled than I did when it was dubbed in English. I suppose it's possible that since you kind of knew the story the second time around, it was easier. But yeah, that, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, but um, but yeah. So um, I'll, I'll try to do a brief recap of the plot because, as DB mentioned, he's already he did a review of it last winter, and he kind of went he went over a lot of it. But uh, but to 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 recap it, um, the the movie is mainly follows uh, uh, a kamikaze pilot named shikishima who um who uh he he pretends uh during the during uh, ww2 he uh uh basically chickens out of of it of being a, a kamikaze pilot and he he lands on this island uh you know claiming that he's having problems with the plane but then the mechanics are looking at it and they're like yeah there's nothing wrong with it dude we think you're being a coward um and uh and of course as this is goes down the the island gets attacked by uh, uh gets attacked by godzilla who uh is smaller form godzilla yeah um All right, which, I which i've done before they the, the, that's actually kind of a i think it yeah, an 80s series they did it uh where Godzilla had like a oh he was a Godzilla saurus just an ordinary sized dinosaur living on a dinosaur or on an island in the South Pacific who then got nuked into being a giant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So Godzilla attacks the the camp and then uh, the the lead mechanic whose name is escaping me, um, you know, tells him hey get in the plane and shoot it and uh, but then he he freezes up and can't shoot it and then. Uh, everybody on the island dies except for Shikishima and the lead mechanic. Uh, <clears throat> and they they go back to Japan uh, when the war is over. And uh, of course, the, the the country was just completely devastated uh, in the war. Uh, and Shikishima's uh, house uh, has been destroyed. His parents are dead. And uh, his, his neighbor... Uh, you know, she's just like, weren't you a kamikaze pilot? <laughs> right. It's like, what? You wait, you were a suicide bomber? Yeah, but not a good one. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so then he's he's basically trying to get his get his life in order, and then he runs into this young woman carrying a baby. The baby, and she uh, hands him the baby, and he's just like, what am I supposed to do? And then, you know, he's sits around and then he finally leaves and she shows up and basically just ingratiates herself into his into his life uh with the baby even though the 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 baby is not her baby um and uh they kind of enter into this weird domestic situation um right. yeah like some of his co-workers are surprised to find out that they aren't married and that the baby isn't his yeah because they are just they seem to get on so well right yeah and um yeah so it, yeah so he uh, he takes a job um uh, uh working uh on a ship on a little wooden boat uh basically uh mine sweeping uh you know taking a getting the mines and destroying them because during during the war the uh the U.S. and Japan were laying all these mines in the water, and of course, our our mines, the U.S. mines, were more insidious that they were they were magnetic. Yeah. Right. So, a metal boat passes by, it pops up, boom. Yeah. So, um, 
so they're they're going around taking out the mines, and then uh, of course the the U S you know, the Cold War is ramping up, and the U S is doing all the nuclear testing out in uh, Bikini Atoll, uh, where where Godzilla gets absorbs all the nuclear radiation and gets bigger. Yep, and then he's just making a beeline for the Japanese mainland. Yes. Uh, why why is he going that way? Yeah. Because it's a Godzilla movie. It just yes. wouldn't be the same if he attacked Singapore instead. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so uh, then uh, in uh, Godzilla, he, you know, there, there, there's some really great sequences out there on the water, uh, you know, where they're dropping the mines, trying to, trying to stop them. And uh, then, uh, then Godzilla goes into uh, Ginza, which they had just rebuilt. <laughs> No, no, Ginza. Like they were saying that it ha- it, ha- it hadn't even been hit in the war. Like it was oh, that's the, right. that's one right. of the one yeah. spots that had been spared, and he's like, I "Can't have that." Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, and so then, um, uh, well, of course, the other part of it too is uh, Noriko, the the you know the the love interest in the movie. Uh, she took a job working in Ginza, and uh, you know, she's she's leaving just as Godzilla attacks, and then she's in the the train car and. Uh, and then he he goes there to try to save her, but then you know she dies, quote unquote. Um, and uh, of course he's he's heartbroken. And he's like, I want to you know stop Godzilla. Right, and I, we should probably mark this with spoilers because uh, yeah. So, so, uh, so I'll say that on a second viewing, it seemed just as implausible that she was still alive at the end of it as it did the first time. Uh, yeah. Well, 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 did you uh, did you notice the uh, the black spot on her neck? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Okay, I yeah. don't know if like that was a piece of Godzilla, if that was just like some sort of blood illness, or what the, what that was supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that would yeah. be something for them to approach in a sequel. Yeah, 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 because yeah, her her injuries appear to be very minor compared. Yeah, right. to, to considering right. what happened to her. Yeah, right. Considering that. She was hit by a massive shockwave when the air was full of debris, and then when the shockwave from Godzilla's blast collapsed back on itself, everything was sucked back into the vacuum. Like, yeah, I, I don't care if you're Spider Man, you're probably not surviving that, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so the what was it? Oh, uh, of course, the other part of it was. With with Shigashima, who is who clearly has post traumatic stress, yeah. combined um, with a massive amount of survivor's guilt and guilt that he didn't do his duty from his right. perspective. Yeah, yeah. So he he's got kind of got a renewed sense to to actually do that when once uh, Godzilla shows up. And uh, I will say probably my probably my favorite character in the movie was uh, Doc, the uh, the mm-hmm. the scientist guy who he was he's on the boat with. Uh, with Shikishima, and then you you find out that he he was in naval uh, he was a na- navy technician, and uh, he and he's the one who comes up with the plan to 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 kill Godzilla. Um, I, I, he he reminded me of a, a character in an in an in an anime. Um, I guess just from the way he looked and the way he right he, he had was. had his he had kind of like eccentric curly hair. Yeah, yeah. probably trying to like uh, evoke a Einstein or the like. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I you know I, I enjoyed this movie. I mean, I and and again, I'm not a I'm not a monster movie guy. I'm not a Godzilla fan. I you know my only exposure to Godzilla has been with the 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 Western movies, the Hollywood movies. Uh, you know the the one that came the, the one that came out ten years ago uh, from the guy that did Rogue One and. Um, and then the really bad one from the guys that did Independence Day. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I like like this movie a lot, and and it it shows it, it shows what can be done. It, you can still make a great movie with with great action set pieces and visual effects on a. What did they spend on this? Like twelve million dollars? Uh, the stated budget is fifteen million. 15. But the director apparently said in an interview, "Man, I wish they'd given me fifteen million dollars." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> which isn't a number, but it's uh, we know it was less than fifteen million. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so not, not a whole lot of money. So it's, it's like, <laughs> so my understanding is that, okay. So part of what let them, uh, part of what let them make it for so cheap is that he was intimately uh, connected to the special effects process. Like yeah. it's like a lot of these huge budget movies, the stuff gets sent off to some CGI house. It comes back. They have to ask for corrections. He was kind of there with his team and kind of looking over their shoulders and was able to give them immediate feedback. Uh, okay. Um, what I'll also say is that on a second watch through, I would say that like things like Godzilla, Godzilla looks good. There are moments with certain CGI objects where I go, okay, that, yeah, that's, that's serviceable. Like it does the job. Yeah. But I've definitely seen worse in major Hollywood movies. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The um, the tanks in there looked a little, looked a little wonky. Right. Yeah. All right. Some of the vehicles looked a little bit off. Um, and on a second viewing, it was much more obvious that the section of city that he destroyed was all CGI. Yeah. Yeah. No, no miniature work in this one because that does bring the cost up quite a bit. Yeah. I I, I liked how he walked. I like his walk, which is obviously a, a, a homage to the to the original, right? And it they definitely did a good job of carrying the sense of weight, because like there's a very particular way you have to shoot things that are you know normally sized so that they look properly big, yeah, uh, or in this case a CGI model so it looks properly big. Um, so. I sound like you preferred the Japanese dub. I think I'm still going to stick with the Japanese dub after giving the English dub a shot. Yeah. So they did a better job than I was expecting. And anybody who didn't want to watch it because they didn't want to read subtitles has a good alternative. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, I, I think the, uh, I, I believe Johnny Young Bosch was the voice of um, Shigashima. It sounded like him. It sounded like him, but I, I think I, I think in the credits he's listed as or the actor is listed as someone else. Um, it, it it could be him using a different name. Yeah, yeah let's find out, shall we? Behind yeah. the voice actors, God, Zilla minus one. I mean, it, yeah, because like I mean, I've seen enough episodes of Trigun that like, oh yeah, that does sound like sound Darren like Barnett. Uh, yeah, let's, let's see if he is. Apparently he is a, he is apparently just a Johnny Young Bosch alike, but I definitely oh, believed it. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Good, good imitation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it looks like he's actually done a couple of uh, couple of. Uh, he was in Skull Island. Okay, it looks like he's been uh, voice acting his way across streaming a bit. Hmm. Samurai oh. Rabbit. Oh, he was he was in the Usagi Yojimbo 2022 uh, cartoon. Oh. I didn't know there was an Usagi Yojimbo cartoon from 2022. Might be worth checking out. Yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. Um, the other things that I forget this occurred to me at the time, but it was genius foreshadowing. Uh, like every time Godzilla showed up, a bunch of deep sea fish would. Like, if you've ever gone fishing and accidentally gotten something that's a like a rockfish or something and brought it up too fast, their yeah. swim bladder just bursts out the front of their face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so they had, like, a lot of deep-sea fish uh, bobbing up to the surface every time Godzilla showed up. And it yeah. occurred to me, in retrospect, that was genius foreshadowing for their initial plan to kill Godzilla by, like, by using his uh, uh, pressure against him. Right, yeah. just like rapidly dropping him down, then yanking him back up. Yeah, uh, I will say that the there was a part of the ending that I had thought seemed a little bit too clean the first time around, but on a second viewing, it uh, it came across better. I'll, we're kind of talking a little bit of spoilers, but I'll go ahead and just uh, leave that to the imagination. Yeah. I, um, and yeah, just this is just a, all around a good movie. Even knowing what was going to happen, like in the scene where Noriko is in the middle of that attack, I actually teared up a bit at, at certain key moments. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, movie's good at hitting you hard. 
Yes, it is. Yeah, it, it it still kind of killed my desire to watch the most recent Godzilla versus Kong because, by all accounts, the human plotline of that is garbage. Which, yeah, this kind of raised the bar of hey, you know, you can have kaiju action without, uh, without having a dumb human plot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. I, and I. I I wish Hollywood t- Hollywood would take note of this movie and in you know in in terms of the storytelling and in terms of of the uh, the money they spent on the movie. You know, one thing I've noticed in a lot of Japanese media, at least ones that I would say are boy focused, I guess would be a way to put it, hmm. is that and I think this is very conducive to storytelling. Is the mentality that you kind of have to prove yourself because yeah. like. You know, where you have things like, I'll just pick on Disney a moment here, you have things like Turning Red, where the overall message of the story is that you were fine the whole time. It's everyone else who is wrong. Yeah. Or Captain Marvel or whatnot. That doesn't leave anywhere for a character to go. But I can, like, you know, things like My Hero Academia. I'm a, I'm a useless normie in a world full of superheroes. I wish I was super. Well, now you get the chance to be super, but you, you can't control your powers yet. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I need to get good. Yeah, it, like just the sense that there is a duty that you have to fulfill, and then you either think you failed to fulfill it, or you think you're failing to fulfill it. It just works very nicely. Yeah, and so uh, characters need goals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> outside of petty revenge or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, and they 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 can't just be the bestest ever right from the get go. Like yeah. exactly, and, and they also can't be complete victims either. Right. Yeah. Okay, we're sp- we're speaking in absolutes. Yes, um, there are exceptions, of course, but by and large, for a story of this nature, like if, if, imagine if Shikishima was just like, "Man, it was so unfair that they asked me to be a kamikaze, and everyone's just being mean to me now." Yeah, <laughs> I didn't do anything wrong, and he just like kept insisting it the whole way along. Like he'd be he'd be right. Like you know, people talked about him like he had failed them directly by not like man, one kamikaze pilot would have made the whole difference right there. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> um yeah. but like if, if he had just been argumentative and argued his own case, way less interesting movie. <laughs>